Good evening and welcome to Thursday evening prayer on this the 29th of December and soon we will be entering a new year. I pray it will be a new year with a difference in that we will bless all our negative mindsets and release them to God and begin this new year coming with a more positive outlook so that we can manifest more God's amazing abundance into our lives. This evening I've lit a candle and it's not only for global peace and interspiritual unity, but it's for each one of you, especially those who are hurting this night, who are in need of prayer for all God's children of all faiths and none. Amen. So we begin with our evening prologue, but first we summon the Holy Spirit of God to guide us and to speak through us. Amen. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the Heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly Mother and all the great Masters, and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Thursday evening, we commune with the angel of wisdom, saying, Angel of wisdom, descend upon my thinking body and enlighten all my thoughts. Superior currents of thought are then sent and attracted by the thinking body, while the individual contemplates all thought on earth and in the cosmic ocean of thought. And coming to our little book of Celtic prayers, we begin with an opening prayer of thanksgiving. I am bending my knee in the eye of God who created me, in the eye of the Son who died for me, in the eye of the Spirit who moves me, in love and desire for my many gifts, you have bestowed upon me each day and each night each sea and land each weather fair each calm each wild thanks be to you O god and now we come to our first reading this evening and it's from psalms now by leslie brandt and i'm going to open the book guided by the spirit of god Psalm 39. I said to myself, I'll watch it. I'll grit my teeth and hold in my hostilities, at least as long as I am in the midst of ungodly people. And I honestly tried, but it was no use. The pressures increased, and the more I stewed about it, the more frustrated I became. Finally, I exploded. O oh God, demonstrate some concern for me. Give me some reason for this incessant conflict, some objective for this fast ebbing life of mine. You made me what I am, a bubble or a bag of gas, and the span of my existence is but a speck of dust to you. It is true about every man. He is no more than a smidgen of moist air or a shadow without lasting substance. Man enters and endures this temporal turmoil for no reason whatsoever. He agonizes and toils only to leave the fruits for someone else to enjoy. So I wonder what in the world it's all about. I have no hope at all except in you. I continue to lay claim to your forgiveness for my failures. Keep them from making me a despised and abhorred creature in the sight of men. Lift your heavy hand from me. I am utterly weary <coughs> excuse me, of its oppressing weight. When you punish a man with judgment of his failures, you suck up like a tornado everything that is precious to him. 
Surely man is more than a passing cloud on the eternal horizon. Hear and decipher these confusing thoughts of mine. Lend your ear to these agonizing cries. Turn not away from my pains and problems. I am just a swiftly passing traveler, as were all men before me. Turn your scornful eye away from me. Let me have just a morsel of happiness before I leave this world and enter into oblivion. I pray that the words of that psalm has spoken to your heart. <clears throat> and from med meditation now, <clears throat> again by Leslie Brandt, we read the reading for today, the 29th of December. This is Christ, let him love you. And we read in Colossians, verse 1, 13 to 20, a synopsis. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Jesus did not make himself king. He did what no king is ever expected to do. He emptied himself taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. It was God, our Father Mother, who made him king. And what a king we have! How gracious is our loving God to place us in his hands and under his domain! image of God, <clears throat> excuse me, firstborn of all creation, in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the Christ whom millions of people refuse to accept as the king of their lives who men and women scorn or ignore or crucify afresh in their unbelief and rebelliousness, who many of us often hold back from or, f or fail to trust and obey. It is he who is our king. Do we dare to do any less than crown him Lord of all? How can we ever withhold our love our loyalty, our lives, and all we possess from the King of Kings. This is the end of the calendar year. Tomorrow we start over again. May we do so by adoring and celebrating the Christ of Christmas and the Christ of the Gospel, the Son of God, that is one who has come to save us from our sins and who will come again to gather each one of us into his kingdom. This is the Christ. Let him love us, comfort us, reign over us, sustain us, advance his kingdom on earth through us. This is the Christ, our Saviour and Lord and King, and we are his forever. We thank you, our Saviour, Lord and King, for loving us and for keeping us through the year past. We renew our commitment to you and your purposes for the year ahead and pray that we will be pleasing to you. <clears throat> A beautiful reading. I pray it spoke to your heart. And now, for some beautiful prayers from the Book of Comfort and Healing, prayers and inspiration from many faiths. God loves us is this section, and from Christianity we read, God is love. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, 
it was very good. And from our brothers and sisters of the Baha'i faith, O son of man, veiled in my immemorial being and in the ancient eternity of my essence, I knew my love for thee. Therefore I created thee and have engraved on thee mine image and revealed to thee my beauty. O son of man, I love thy creation, hence I created thee. Wherefore do thou love me, that my name, thy name, and fill thy soul with the spirit of life? And from our brother and sister Sikhs we read, The Lord God is my friend and companion. God shall be my helper and support in the end. From our brother and sister Hindus we read, I am alike for all, I know not hate, I know not favour. What is made is mine, but them that worship me with love, I love. They are in me, and I in them. Take my last word, my utmost meaning have. Precious thou art to me, right well beloved, listen. I tell thee for thy comfort this, give me thy heart, adore me, serve me, cling in faith and love and reverence to me, so shalt thou come to me, I promise true, for thou art sweet to me. And from Islam we read, <clears throat> the Lord and cherisher of the worlds, who created me and it is he who guides me who gives me food and drink, and when I am ill, it is he who cures me, who will cause me to die and then live to live again, and who, I hope, will forgive me my faults on the day of judgment. And finally, from our brothers and sisters of the Judaic faith, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. I hope you enjoy those few prayers from our brothers and sisters of different beliefs. <clears throat> and yet many Christians won't embrace brothers and sisters of other beliefs, and yet we've so much to learn from them because their love of God is so tangible and so true. And now coming, <clears throat> may I have a drink? Hold on. Oh, that's better. We come now to the short scripture reading and intercessions from the Divine Office of Vespers for Thursday the 29th. <clears throat> And our scripture reading comes from 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Something which has existed since the beginning that we have heard, and we have seen with our own eyes, that we have watched and touched with our hands, the Word who is life. This is our subject. That life was made visible, we saw it, and we are giving it our testimony telling you of the eternal life which was with the Father, Mother, God and has been made visible to us. What we have seen and heard, we are telling you, so that you too may be in union with us, as we are in union with our Father, Mother, God and with their Son, Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord, Thanks be to God. And the short response read, The Word became flesh, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word became flesh, Alleluia, Alleluia. And He lived among us. The Word became flesh, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, the Word became flesh. Alleluia, Alleluia. And the Magnificat Antiphon. The King of Heaven was born of the Virgin, 
he came to recall fallen men to his heavenly kingdom. And now, my dear brothers and sisters gathered here, I invite you to join me for the Magnificat, the Canticle of Mary. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, who is my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her lowliness, henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength, and he scatters the proud-hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones, and he exalts the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, and he sends the rich away empty-handed. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The King of Heaven was born of the Virgin. He came to recall fallen man to his kingdom. And now I would like to invite you to join me for our evening intercession. Let us pray to our merciful Father, Mother God, who anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel to the poor. Response, Lord, in your pity, have mercy on us. Lord, in your pity, have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord, for wanting everyone to be saved. May the whole world rejoice in the birth of your Son. Response, Lord, in your pity, have mercy on us. You sent your Son to proclaim the age of grace. May all enjoy peace and true freedom. Response, Lord, in your pity, have mercy on us. You led the wise men to worship the child in a stable. Help us to recognize Christ by faith. Response, Lord, in your mercy, have mercy on us. You call all men and women to share your light. Let us set out to be witnesses of the gospel of peace. Response, Lord, in your mercy and in your pity, have mercy on us. Your light dawned upon the nations when Christ was born in Bethlehem. May the dead see your face and live in glory forever especially all our loved ones, now departed. Response, Lord, in your mercy, have mercy on us. And now, let us pray a moment in silence, for we are in the presence of God, the God who has many names. So let us be still. And if you are troubled, or if you are feeling anxious or afraid, or maybe you feel unworthy of God's love, or maybe you have a need for prayer this evening. Whatever your needs are, name them, bless them, release them to God in a mindset of gratitude, and just say thank you, God, for relieving you of this burden or worry or maybe a joy. Let us be still now. evening, we began our evening prayer by holding every child of God, of all faiths and none, who may be hurting at this hour. And we have a duty of care to one another, because if one child of God is hurting, the whole family of God also hurts. So we pray this evening a prayer of gratitude that Russia has agreed with the other groups in the Syrian armies to begin the cessation of war from midnight so that peace may prevail 
in Syria. We remember all those who've been affected by what has taken place over the last five years in Syria, where ancient cities and monuments have been destroyed, where temples dedicated to God have been bombed out, where many men, women and children and the elderly have been wounded and fatally injured, where many have had to leave their homes, where many have died of injuries sustained from bullets and bombs, where all their hospitals have been destroyed and where many have died of thirst and starvation, and where its refugees now are living in tent cities in this bitterly cold winter. Father, Mother, God, where have we gone wrong? Why do we do what we do to one another? Why can't we, the children of Abraham, live in peace? For we own nothing. Everything we have is on loan. Even the very land and the property where we live is a gift from you, O oh God. Why do we cling to material things? Why do we want to control things and people? We pray for those who abuse the children of God, for those who are turned on by violence. We pray for our young people, especially those who are ferial children, who've never known true parental love and who always end up in trouble and in prison. We pray for those on death row. We pray for all men and women in our prison system around the world. And we pray for those who have a responsibility to show human dignity, compassion and justice. We pray for all our religious leaders, the politicians, to act honourably and justly before God. We pray for those who manipulate the word of God to suit their own agenda in order to coerce many to follow false prophets. We pray for our beloved animal kingdom and our sacred earth. And now let us be still. And we pray this beautiful version of the Lord's Prayer. Our God, you are everywhere, infinite and eternal, unknowable, yet we call upon you and give you a sacred name. Your will brings everything into being, the multiverse and all dimensions. It is by your grace that we live. You see us as whole and perfect. We pray that we learn forgiveness so that we can see others as whole and perfect too. Guide us to understand that wealth and power are illusions, and as we dwell in the world of duality, let us discern and eschew evil, for you are beyond duality. You are our only reality, forever and ever. Amen. And I forgot to remember Brian and Tony, our Twitter friends with Caroline and Sister Veronica Paul, and our many friends on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Hangouts for Brother Skip and Brother Thomas Aquinas Q. Our closing prayer. Let us pray. Ages of stuff. This this missile is nearly fifty years old, and the pages are coming away like no tomorrow. Here we go, Father, Mother, God, all powerful and unseen God, you dispel the shadows of this world when Christ, the true light, dawned upon us. Look favorably upon us, Lord, and we will praise and glorify His birth as man who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer is from the little book of Celtic prayers from my own the Western Hebrides of Scotland. Let us pray. It's a Celtic blessing. O Christ, you are a bright flame before us. You are a guiding star above me. You are the light and love I see in others' eyes. Keep me, O Christ, in a love that is tender. Keep me, O Christ, in a love that is true. Keep me, O Christ, in a love that is strong, tonight, tomorrow, and always. And as I come to blow out this flame, I thank the Lord Christ for honouring his word, that what we ask for in prayer, believing on your behalf, you will receive. Thank you, Jesus. So now, my dear brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and to serve our God. And we pray these beautiful words. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace of our God, your God, reawaken your heart to begin a new year in service I wish you a blessed evening and I look forward to your company again. And in the words of our dear Father Francis, may God reward you. Bless you.